Hey guys, in today's episode, I wanted to have a serious conversation about mental health in the EDM industry, particularly how DJs are affected by their career choice and just in general how this year has impacted both artists and fans alike. Trigger warning, today I am going to be discussing mental health topics that involve anxiety, depression, and suicide. I really hope that by having these conversations, we can start to work on the solution and bring awareness to those who are suffering. With that being said, let's get into today's episode. What is up you guys? Welcome back to Rave Culture Cast, your weekly guide to the EDM community, music festivals, and more. I am your host, Emma Capotis. Thank you all so much for being here. I hope you all are doing well. I hope you had a nice holiday and a happy Thanksgiving. Um, I hope you got those Black Friday deals and took advantage of them. Uh, I do every year. I try to get all my holiday shopping done and you know take care of my friends and family and stuff like that. But that is all behind us. We are officially in December, which is crazy. Um, like I said, I have a lot planned for the end of this year in these next few episodes, but um, before I jump into things, today was sort of an impromptu episode, to be honest with you. I had the idea about doing this um, based on something that happened last week in the news, and I was a little nervous to tackle this topic on this podcast, to be honest with you, because I'm not an expert in mental health. I can only speak to these things through my own experiences and through things I've witnessed, but Honestly, after I watched this one documentary this weekend, I really just sat down and I was like, you know what, this is a super important topic to talk about right now, especially with everything going on in the world. The holidays can be an extremely difficult time for people, so I think these episodes that make me nervous or that seem scary on the outside are the most important to have. So we're going to have a more serious episode this week, and I hope that's okay with all of you. It's important to me, so I wanted to share it with you. Um, but before we dive into all of that, just some quick announcements just to get through here in the beginning. Um, so I mentioned this last week, but starting today, if you guys do watch this podcast on YouTube, uh, I'm moving the full episodes to the official Rave Culture Cast YouTube channel. So definitely go subscribe over there if you want to um, stay up to date and see all the YouTube videos. I just wanted to separate it from my personal channel so that it's easier to find and then that way that channel has um, the weekly highlights, the bonus clips, and the full episodes all in one place. So again, that's just called Rave Culture Cast. Okay, um, let me jump into our listener of the week really quickly because I did want to shout out somebody special who is a part of our Facebook group fam, and his name is Wilson Andres Rodriguez, and he posted something this past week after the news of Io's passing that I thought was really really cool it's an amazing initiative so i wanted to just share his post really quickly i hope that's okay so he said a year ago i created anjuna breathe a private group on facebook for the anjuna family that now encompasses ravers from all families this support group is led peer-to-peer -peer, raver to raver as a safe space where we can open up share our darkness without judgment ask for help and talk about mindfulness tips music support help and cheer for each other our beloved Aya was and is and always will be a part of the Anjuna family. With the new lockdowns being set in place, the holidays approaching, which can be triggers and whatever else that might, might happen, falling into the traps of isolation can be very easy and fast. Because of these reasons, I am expanding the group to a bi-weekly Zoom support meetings based in mindfulness, music, and sharing. Anjuna Breathe, the meetings will be led raver to raver. Connection is the antidote to isolation, you are not alone, you are loved, and you are needed. Um, and he said the Rave community saved his life and it's his way of giving back. So definitely join and participate as much or as little as you want to. And he said, if, even if nothing else matters, you can still lead with love. So I thought that was one of the most beautiful things ever that's been written in that group. Again, the private Facebook group is called Anjuna Breathe. If any of you guys want to connect with other ravers and have these types of conversations over there, it sounds like an amazing support group of, of people. So the biggest shout out to our listener of the week, Wilson Rodriguez. I'm so thankful you're a part of this family. Thank you for what you're doing. You are helping more people than you realize and I think it's absolutely amazing. So I just wanted to extend that quick little shout out today for our listener of the week. Alrighty you guys, so I'm just gonna jump right into things. I wanna just preface this by saying I have no idea how long this episode's gonna be. 
Uh, truly, I have an outline in front of me. I wrote some notes down and some statistics I wanna share. And I really just wanna speak from the heart and talk about things that I think are important. So basically today's episode is gonna be all about mental health. I, in particular, wanted to talk about DJs and artists and how their career definitely can play um, a role in their well-being and their mental health and their physical health as well and it's something that isn't talked about enough and uh, I also wanted to talk about us fans at home and, and this year in general I don't really like open up about this stuff to be honest with you because I do I'm like an extremely positive person that's just how I am like yes I have my moments I cry literally all the time I'm a Pisces I just am that way but I do, I am pretty positive and I am a motivated person and I usually, I haven't dealt with severe depression or things like that, but I definitely have the side of me that's like very anxiety prone, very stressful and I've dealt with my own mental health issues from when I was a kid and I mentioned in a video I did on this past week on Io's passing that I personally was in therapy for over seven years of my life. So it's definitely something that completely changed my life and helped me and made me into the person that I am today. So. Yeah, so I just think it's an important to have these conversations and I want to talk about this year in general and just open up about how I'm like really feeling about it because I feel like I brush the surface of it but I don't really talk about it because um, I have tried to just like be this light for you guys or be this person that like projects hope and positivity and optimism which I still believe in all of those things but sometimes you just gotta like be really real and say like this sucks which it does so that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. So I wanted to, again, preface this by saying I'm not a mental health expert. I'm going to be leaving resources in the description of this video. If any of you guys listening, again, are struggling right now or you are going through depression or you have suicidal tendencies or thoughts, please reach out and get help. Please talk to somebody immediately. Um, it can do wonders for you. So all of those resources will be listed down below if you need any of that. But uh, let's, where do I start? Um, so this was all stemming from the news of Garrett Lockhart, AKA Io's passing last week. I want to say this, that the cause of his death is completely speculation. We do not have that information of how he actually passed. Um, but I talked about it in the video, like to say I was completely devastated is an understatement and I don't want to cry. I already can feel myself welling up. Um, he was one of my favorite artists. I sang his praises. I was such a big fan before I saw him for the first time at EDC Las Vegas 2019. So to hear that news, like I thought it was a sick joke. I genuinely was so completely shocked like the rest of the entire EDM industry was and I'm absolutely devastated. We've lost such an, an amazing talent, but a lot of his posts and previous blogs and things like that have been brought up and there was a lot of mental health issues that he was cl clearly struggling with and talked about in his posts and his music just meant so much to so many people, especially to me and other fans and other artists and people who were influenced by him. So I wanted to expand upon all of that today and discuss mental health. Um, the, the documentary I watched, which I wanted to shout out, is called Why We DJ. I'll leave a link down below. Um, it's on YouTube. And it interviews a bunch of famous DJs about their jobs and their careers and what it's like and how high stress it is and like the highs and lows of this career and basically just like the mental health issues that come along with being a DJ because their type of work in particular is very high stress so I'll get into that in a little bit in a little bit but I highly recommend watching why we DJ I thought it was like a great thing to talk about especially right now the one thing about that documentary that was kind of a little chilling to me was it was I think it came out in 2016 when Avicii announced that he was retiring from music. So it was a little eerie to watch because we obviously know that Avicii went on to take his own life, which we'll talk about today, which was absolutely horrible. So it was, they were basically talking about his retirement and like how much this job wears down on people. And Eric Murillo is in the documentary as well. And he also took his life this past year. So it's clearly something that DJs are struggling with or some DJs are struggling with and we don't talk about it enough especially when it comes to men because I feel like in some, I don't know, I feel like it's pretty widely known that a lot of men don't wanna like share their struggles or vocalize that they're having issues and I kind of, that's why I wanted to do this because even I haven't like talked about my own issues but I wanna make it like known that it's okay to come forward and you should talk about it and you should, again, like even this community, Andrew and Breathe, like 
find people that you can talk to, vocalize how you're feeling and share that, whether you're an artist or you're a fan or whatever, any normal person, don't be afraid to share your feelings and your struggles with other people because that's when you start to work on a solution is when you can finally admit it and say it out loud. So I just wanted to say all that. I'm already getting on a tangent, guys. I apologize, this episode's gonna be all over the place because I have genuinely so many thoughts on this topic. Um, but yeah, let's talk about 2020 in general um, and how hard that's been on the live events industry and touring artists and us as music lovers and festival goers. I spoke with Gesture earlier this year. His episode was in March, I think it was. Definitely go check that one out. But it was like two weeks into COVID when things were just like starting to shut down. And even he was talking about like, what the fuck do I do with myself and my time? Like, I don't really know how to make money right now. Like what a financial burden this is. And literally just last week, I read a tweet from Dusty Cloud, who is a foreign DJ living in the United States. And I read about his struggles and what he can't figure out how to make money here. And there's all these issues, especially when you're a foreign artist in the United States. So this year has been a complete clusterfuck. And I, I think we already know that. And that's, I don't want to like hammer that home, but I don't think we realize like how difficult it has been on artists in particular. So, okay, I think I'm gonna start out with our mental health as in fans, festival goers, music lovers, people who are not working in the events industry. So, okay, like I said, I kind of keep a very positive outer shell on things. That's just like, I wanna keep it a positive space. I wanna be a place you can go to to be entertained and you know talk about all the amazing things about this industry and things like that but okay so truly this year when all of this started happening obviously like was completely devastated to learn that we wouldn't have live events and festivals and it's funny like i felt like people like friends or family outside of you know my friends who i i met through festivals and stuff were like how are you feeling like how do you feel without these events and i think i would just like scratch the surface and be like it fucking sucks like I'm pretty devastated but I wouldn't really get into it and I don't know it just depends on the day but like I'm extremely sad and I don't want to cry again just like I'm extremely sad I'm sure a lot of you listening like when you really think about it which I try not to go there I just feel empty about it I truly do like I've been going to live events since I was 15 concerts and like shows and things like that are like literally a part of my personality like they're ingrained in me i love live music more than anything it's been such a huge part of my life i feel like i'm missing a part of myself without these events and i'm sure so many of you listening feel the same like if this is your number one hobby or if events were your place to escape or be yourself like be genuinely yourself and have fun and things like that and that was taken away from us like i don't think we understand how much trauma we've been through this year simply by having that because with other people who may have hobbies outside of these things like they didn't lose their favorite hobbies or like they didn't lose the things they're the most passionate about in life um and everybody's you know traumas and things like that are different but i don't think we realize like how much it has affected us and so like i try not to think about it on a daily basis but like my last festival was over a year ago it was edc orlando 2019 like i very much look forward to the day that we can have them again it truly truly has been horrible just to like put it plainly um but i'm dealing with it like all of us are dealing with it and we try and find the positives in other places in our life but it does definitely feel like a part of me is missing you can call it like a personality trait or whatever but i truly do feel like that way um and and i'm a positive person like i'm a person who very much understands how privileged i am i'm lucky to still have my job i'm lucky to have my fiance and my family and this home and so i have to put myself in somebody else's shoes who doesn't have those things or who might be in a dark place or who might already be prone to depression or you know other things like that um because i cannot imagine how you feel or how you have felt this past year and how difficult it's been for you if that was you know a way that you coped with things like that so i am truly like my heart goes out to you guys who are really struggling right now especially around the holidays and again i just want to stress if again if you guys need to talk to some talk to somebody please 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 put your hand up and talk to somebody again therapy can work wonders they it's easier now than ever they have like talk space and better help so again those will be linked down below and these are just ways you can start talking to somebody over text 
or phone call or video call, like whatever it is. So please, if you're feeling like it, you just need to vent, whatever it might be, definitely reach out and talk to somebody. But this beginning part was just to say like, I acknowledge you, I feel your pain as well. It's not as easy as it seems or as I sometimes portray it to be. Like I'm just as devastated and so, so heartbroken that we don't have live events. And it's like heartbroken on multiple levels. It's one, like as a fan, just being sad that we don't have our like favorite hobby or thing to do. And then it's a whole nother level of like, I feel so bad for the artists. I feel bad for anybody who works in the live event industry, who, who was furloughed or lost their job and has been out of work for nine or 10 fucking months. Like I can't even imagine, I cannot even imagine. So I just feel like all of this, I keep telling myself is just like the biggest learning lesson of all and like how much we're gonna appreciate these things when they come back because like we're just gonna feel them so much more deeply um, and have so much more of a, an appreciation for them when they come back. So that's kind of just like my little mental health check. Um, this year has been extremely, extremely difficult and uh, I literally remember, I think it was, oh God, it must've been in April or May when Insomniac started doing their live streams or like they started going back, the EDC Rewind, I think is what it was called. I'll never forget, they played like Insom um, Elenium's like EDC 2017 EDC set and I literally started bawling, just like watching my computer screen because I just was so fucking devastated that they were gone and we have no idea when they're gonna come back. It's the not knowing for me. That is like the hardest part to get through. But again, I try to be optimistic and I do see a light at the end of the tunnel and hopefully with these vaccinations and things like that, or these rapid testing systems, we'll be able to have things back by mid or late next year. So anyway, that's the first portion I kind of wanted to chat about. Next, I wanted to talk about DJ's mental health in 2020. And again, I completely acknowledge that I'm coming from a place of just, I'm a normal person, I've never been a DJ, I never will be a DJ, but I just wanna talk about the things I've witnessed and again, kind of like what I saw from this documentary. So this kind of brings me to my next point. If this is how much we are hurting, I cannot even begin to imagine how artists and producers and musicians feel right now. I've read a couple people's posts, I'm gonna read some more today as examples, but if put yourself in their shoes. If you've literally poured all of your time and energy and money into your music and your career and touring and then this year comes along and rips all of that away from you and basically says okay you can't have this job anymore and we're gonna take all these things that you love away and there was your finding like your um your income and all this stuff like i cannot even imagine coming to terms with that and dealing with it this past year and i know every single person is a different case some people you know, we spoke to Bijou this year, he was doing production lessons and classes with people like one-on-one -on -one, and people have done live streaming and Twitch and some people have been lucky enough to play, you know, like Insomniac or Digital Mirage or like these different festivals. But other than that, there's not that much going on. Like some have been lucky enough to play drive-in raves and things like that, but it's extremely difficult. Um, I wanted to read this one post that Tommy Sunshine posted on his Facebook and he wrote, very sad to hear about Io's passing away last night. I felt like he was one of the most talented artists making music right now. When I saw his tweet yesterday reminiscing about a big club show, it seemed a bit odd to me. If you go through his IG posts, he has been crying out for help for months. I don't know how many more of these as we need as an industry to wake up. DJ AM, Avicii, and now IO were preventable tragedies if we decided to create an infrastructure that helps artists in need. With all of these corporations that control this industry now and the billions of dollars spent on EDM, you'd think there'd be something set up to somewhere to prevent this from happening. This year has been brutal on all of us, and winter, which is hard on most artists, hasn't even begun yet. I hope we don't see more of this coming in the, in the coming months. In the meantime, the industry better begin to create something to help artists who are suffering because there are lots of them who need help now. I hope people can take this seriously and actually do something about it instead of just being sad that these talented artists are gone. Um, I could not agree with him more. I'm gonna get into this a little in a little bit, but I am gonna talk about like some potential solutions or ways to look forward of like how we can work on a solution for this or how we can potentially help um, what can be done for these artists and that choose this career. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, I feel for everyone, for anybody's dreams or who were crushed this year, especially like we're not even talking about the mainstream artists who will probably be completely fine, you know, who make millions and millions of dollars and still play shows. Like I'm talking about the small artists who might've like just been up and coming, who are gonna have a huge year this year, or who are gonna have their first tour, or we're about booked to play like 15 festivals. Like those are the people I'm worried about because if they weren't like off the ground and running yet, like how are they able to continue on their dream? And how many people probably have taken a different path this year and opted for a more realistic job where they can make a steady income? Like this year probably has derailed so many people's jobs, I can't even imagine. And that's not even in the music industry, like people who own small businesses or like a karate school or like literally whatever, and then we're closed down for months and will be permanently closed and we'll never open them again. Like I, this year has just completely fucked everybody. Um, sorry, rant over. But uh, one other post I wanted to share, I shared this in the video I did on IO, but um, DJ Kendall shared this tweet that I thought was very vulnerable for her. And yeah, I wanted to share it with you guys because I think this is another example of how artists might be feeling and what they might be dealing with right now that you don't know about. So she said, followers, I wanted to share my experience of this year and how it's impacted me and has impacted other producers I've been close with. I was set up for an amazing year and it was all ripped away in an instant. I spent most months drinking them away and forming abusive habits that included substance abuse, self-harm, and multiple suicide attempts. It felt as if I had no identity anymore. I gave everything up for music and it felt like it didn't exist anymore. I spent six to seven whole months without even opening up Ableton. At a certain point, I was telling myself to stay alive for my family. I lost a lot of my friends due to psychotic episodes while I was drinking and under the influence and created a lot of problems that eventually led me to rock bottom. I don't mean this to be a sob story of any sort, but I wanted to give some perspective as to how a lot of others are feeling as well. I was too embarrassed to reach out to my friends. I felt completely and utterly alone. Since then, I've sought out help that I needed, got some medication to give me the extra strength and I'm starting from the bottom up. The passing of Garrett and Tony, which is Cookie Monster, has really brought to light how much we need to be looking out for each other and checking on all of our friends. I've lost so many people this year and almost myself because of this pandemic. I want everyone to know that I'm here to talk to, reach out to people, seek help even when it feels shitty to do. I'm also implying that creatives especially need more resources now more than ever. We are in this together and I see a light at the end of the tunnel. We've lost some amazing souls this year and we don't need to lose any more. I love you all and please stay strong. My DMs will always be open to anyone. Thank you to everyone who has stuck by my side and lifted me up and loved me even at my lowest. Times are tough right now in the music industry and I just want you all to know that I love you, Kendall. So I thought that was extremely brave and very, very vulnerable of her to share and I just like, I just feel like that's one example of literally how so many people are probably feeling and what they're dealing with behind the scenes that we don't even know about, especially talking about like substance abuse issues. I just need, I like needed to bring that up. Like my heart literally goes out to people so much because I can't even imagine how many people are struggling. And this is just one DJ, like this is one example. And this is like this year alone. Like that documentary I talked about was in 2016. I'm gonna get into it. Like. We, if this is not like a new thing that DJs have like announced retirement or burnout. Like this was happening literally when shows existed. So it's like, what can we do now to make sure that when events come back, people are gonna be busier and crazier than ever and like wanting to book back to back shows. Like how do you, how is there something in place to help with mental health? And I know this is a bigger, so like this is a huge issue. How many people die of suicide on a yearly basis? It's like absolutely insane. And we've seen the rise in that when social media started popping off, but that's a whole separate conversation. So I know it's a much bigger problem and I clearly do not have the answers. I'm not the right person to give that, but just talking about artists and DJs in this industry, you know, what, what has to give, what has to happen. And I, a big thing I wrote down here, I wrote like, what gets me through the day? And I wrote down purpose. Genuinely for me, like my purpose is my work, creating content, this podcast, my relationships, like my art. I truly, like I'm as a creative person, like this, my passion projects get me through the day. I do this like in and out every single day, seven days a week. Like I eat, sleep and breathe all this shit. And so 
I try to put myself in somebody else's shoes. Like if you don't feel like you have purpose, how do you get through the day? And so that's like one big thing that I encourage you guys listening to, like find your purpose, try new things, start new hobbies, pick up something new. Like to me, learning new things just like is such a good exercise for your brain. So that's just like one very small thing I would encourage. Like if you're interested in DJing, like definitely look into doing something like that or you know, whatever it is that you guys think could help you find your purpose. Connecting with people, like we mentioned in the Anjuna Breathe group. Connecting with other people is like one of the biggest things to help you not feel alone. So finding your community, especially online right now, which is the best option, is something you definitely can do. Um, and just staying busy, like as busy as you can, especially now, especially if you don't have a job or something like that, like picking up hobbies or doing something to pass the time and finding that passion. Um, and like DJs right now are trying to do that with live streams or socially distant shows or like whatever they can do to make the best out of the situation. But that's not easy for everyone and some people are definitely mo more prone to having darker days or dealing with se severe anxiety or stress or depression. So. The next thing I just wanted to chat about was mental health in general for the EDM industry and for DJs in particular. So everything we've talked about kind of right now has been 2020 specific, but this is something I've wondered about in general. So I kind of, I was like interested in talking about this in general, but I want to talk about mental health and like the DJ lifestyle. I'm putting that in like parentheses, but DJs are different than other artists. And this is kind of like what was brought up in that documentary. It's not, it's not the same as like a touring pop artist or something, right? Like who puts out an album and then they go on tour for a couple months and then they have a couple months off and like they have seasons where they, they're on and off. DJs are literally all the time. I feel like if you guys have watched like the Steve Aoki documentary on Netflix, that's a great, I think it's called I'll Sleep When I'm Dead. Literally, I just put that together. That's what that's called. Um, it's unreal. I feel like there's kind of this like thing with DJs where like they try to play the most shows that they can in a year or they're always booked and busy but it's all the time and it's like a nightlife job they're working into very early hours in the morning very long sets they can play multiple shows in a day and be flying to different countries in the same day it's never ending they don't have holidays off holidays are some of the biggest things they can play like a Halloween show or a New Year's Eve show like they could be still playing shit it's fucking bananas um every day of the week you can go to las vegas and have a party every single fucking day of the week so it is never ending for them and i'm like just to like lay things up here i'm like a grumpy ass bitch when i don't sleep for one fucking night like you need a normal sleep schedule so i literally cannot imagine how fucked up their sleep schedules are which can definitely be detrimental to your physical health let alone your mental health um, and not having a break or like constantly being on the road or constantly traveling. Like, again, I'm not a good traveler. I don't know how they do it. I do not know how they're on a plane all the time. It's like the constant pressure to always be going, to always have something to do. Um, and it's year round. And like, the other thing I wrote here is how do you, how do you have a family with this life, right? Like that's gotta be a huge question on some people's minds. Um, because especially when you're like looking on the outside in, I feel like the life of a DJ seems extremely glamorous when you think about it and you think about like the nightlife and all of the perks that come along with it, which absolutely, of course, there's so many positive things to choosing this career. But the biggest question I've always had as a fan watching these documentaries and watching things and like Martin Garrix's YouTube series that he did is like, how do they maintain a normal, healthy life and still do everything that they're doing? Like, eventually having children and a family, how do you find that balance? Cause it seems to be that they don't or it's difficult. Um, and I'm sure that is like a decision that weighs heavily on them. Cause like over here, I'm literally a content creator and I'm like, oh my God, if I have kids one day, that's gonna affect like me going to festivals as much. Like I've literally had those thoughts before and I'm a normal person. I can't even imagine being a major DJ and being like, how will having a family affect me and my career and that goes with other industries as well but i'm sure that's why younger artists or younger djs are like go 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 because they want to make the most of their time in the shortest amount of time because you just never know fame can be fleeting you have no idea how long it's going to last so all of this adds up to very extreme highs and lows for djs in particular 
especially now let's like get into the job itself. You're in front of thousands, it could be tens of thousands of people during the day. And then on the flip side, you could be completely alone in a hotel room by yourself. You might have a very small, tight circle of people that are around you, um, but it appears to be that you have all these friends and things like that. So it's like very high, low, like very high highs and very low lows. And I feel like that can be a really isolating career at the same time. So it just is, it's a lot. It's not for everybody. It's definitely not for the faint of heart. Um, I remember I, when I, Bijou was on and I asked him about the touring schedule, he was the person, he was like, I love it. I live for the thrill of it. He's like, I can't wait to travel again. I think there's totally people like that. And again, it depends on like your age and where you are in your life too. I'm sure it's going to change like as you get older and things like that, but it's not easy. Definitely not cut out for everyone. The nightlife experience in its own, I'm going to get into that being around certain substances, um, or different influences can be a huge thing that can be detrimental to your health. Um, I wanted to bring this up. This was a major thing I wanted to talk about. DJs hitting their breaking point or burnout. Something I've talked about plenty of times in this podcast. I've read people's, I can't even remember right now, but I've read people's Twitter posts pre-COVID announcing that they were gonna be taking a hiatus. We have um, Blaster Jacks here in 2015. I wanted to read his Facebook post for some of you who didn't know that this happened, but he basically said, in when did he post this this was october 2015 he said i haven't been feeling well for a while and when i say a while i mean the better part of last year pretty much i've been feeling pretty awful for the most of the three years we've been conquering the world with blaster jacks but it's only recently that i've been able to pinpoint what's been going on at first i was so caught up in the insanity of instantaneous success that i didn't notice i drank more slept less ate worse you know than the usual and as a result, I felt naturally that I had less time to work out, speak with friends and family, and also less time to put in the much needed hours of production work. I like to think I'm a professional, so the level of stress I initially felt from the pressure to keep everything going, I brushed off as part of the job. And so you carry on. The fact that the anxiety I was starting to feel when new dates were looming was becoming increasingly bigger is just something I pushed to the side. There was a job to be done after all. And even when I couldn't see it myself, I'm surrounded with a good team of people who are pointing out that drinking while having a lung infection and being on antibiotics wasn't healthy, wasn't a healthy choice, that the excuses I started to voice for not getting on a flight were verging on the ridiculous, but they all made sense to me at the time. Basically, I was becoming a bit of an asshole to the people around me. We tried all kinds of things to reduce the anxiety and stress from touring less putting in more free time, taking more expensive but more relaxing travel options. We built the studio we felt we messed on the we missed we built the studio we felt we missed on the road. I bought the house I needed as much as a place to call my home. I moved my girlfriend from the States to the Netherlands. It helped initially. I felt better, but the idea of being on the road was suffocating me. I just could not think straight and my spells home were just there to help me recover ever so slightly before needing to go back on the road again. I love performing. If only there was a Scotty to beam me from home to stage, I'd be all for that. And then it hit me, my first panic attack. I couldn't breathe, my head was spinning, and I had to go on stage in less than an hour. I didn't know if I wanted to faint or throw up. The doctor came and ordered me to run around the block a few times and prescribed me some pills. The runs helped, but the pills felt great. That was a I'm oh, sorry, that was a fantastic solution. Now I took some pills before the flight, two, and then bam, in the car on the road just to get back home, not after touring, and another panic attack. At this point, I didn't even know need to do any more dates before we were to have another month off. So I started not sleeping at home. What if the pills were the only thing that could keep me going? What if the fans saw I couldn't keep it together, that I felt like I was going insane? What if, what if? Ultimately, it was my manager who sat me down and made me take a good look at myself and my situation. We spoke about physical and mental health at home and how much of that is taboo in our world. Pretty soon after, I figured out that actually, to be able to continue with Blaster Jacks, I needed to step back and get off the road. Physically and mentally, I'm not wired to be on the road like this, and I need to make the right decision before things start going wrong past a point of no return. I don't want to be one of those guys canceling dates and checking into a hospital with exhaustion. And then he wrote, it's a heavy decision, not just for me, but also for Tom, who I've shared this whole journey with and who has supported me through all of this. Blaster Jacks will always be Tom and me, and just our roles were changed. So basically he announced that 
um, Tom was going to be taking the stage as Blaster Jax and he was going to like work in the studio with him, but he was going to be taking a break. Um, but yeah, that was literally all the way back in 2015. I had no idea about that. I've been a Blaster Jax fan, but I didn't know that whole story. So, and this was just from doing research of like DJs dealing with like burnout and mental health. Then we have Hardwell, probably one of the most famous people who announced his indefinite retirement in 2018. Another perfect example of somebody who became a DJ very, very young. I think he was like 14 or 15 when he started to pop off and had a grueling touring schedule and played all over the world and had an Ibiza residency and all these crazy things and was completely and utterly burnt out at a very young age. He was like probably 28 or 29 years old. Um, and that was devastating for me as a fan, but I completely understood. I was like, I get it. If you're over it and you can't do it anymore, like 100% take care of your mental health and do what you need to do. And then we have Avicii, which we all know the story here. He was already struggling with burnout and mental health issues, and he also had physical health issues as well. He announced his retirement in 2016. And then in one of the worst news of the entire world, we found out that he committed suicide in a hotel room by himself, I'm pretty sure. Absolutely horrible like absolutely horrible young life lost way too young an absolute travesty and it's like how do you prevent these things from happening like how do you save people from getting to that point that they feel like that's the only option and it's, it's just like it's this isn't a new thing we're seeing this story over and over again and I was reading an article in Business Insider and it said according to a study of 2,211 musicians published by a UK charity, Help Musicians in 2016, 69% of respondents had experienced depression, while 71% had panic attacks and or high levels of anxiety, which is very common amongst musicians. Um, I also found an article from Laidback Luke, who has been very vocal about this as well. He wrote this op-ed in Billboard before Avicii had passed away, talking about the dark side of DJ stardom, um, it's a really interesting article and he just talks about the burnout that he's endured and he was pretty close with Avicii um, and just talked about like their strenuous touring schedules and the demand and keeping up with things and it's just insane and I could go on and on but like the the pressure that DJs are under and like the non-stop schedule that for sure is not healthy um, and it's clearly an issue that needs to be addressed but um, one other thing, I read an article that I thought was interesting. It was on Spotify for artists and it was called a psychologist take on mental health for musicians. Um, and it talks about the main stress stressors that musicians go for, go through, excuse me. It said earlier this year, digital distribution platform record union shared the results of a survey conducted with almost 1500 musicians. The report found that more than 73% of independent music makers suffer from symptoms of mental illness and that anxiety and depression were the most commonly experienced negative emotions in relation to music creation. So three of the main things that they pinpointed, which we've kind of talked about today, but I wanted to highlight. One, money headaches. According to Barnaby, there are three pretty consistent reasons independent musicians face mental health challenges. First is financial instability. If you're going to be a musician, it's quite a while before you get to a place where you're financially stable, he notes. That kind of stress can not only lead to a lot of anxiety about your financial situation, but can also make it difficult to take the best possible care of yourself. It might mean that you aren't able to afford healthcare or even afford things that might otherwise keep you balanced, like going to the gym. And I, again, we've brought this up with this year in 2020, direct correlation between losing your job or being furloughed, or furloughed and having depression and anxiety and dealing with the stress every single day about your finances. The second one was pressure to please. The pressure to perform and resonate with audiences is another prevalent mental health challenge identified in musicians. Most people go into music probably wanting to make a difference or have their particular brand of music applauded and acknowledged publicly as something that's great. And I think the pressure to get to a point where your music is thought of as good is a very long road. Uh, Barnby adds that over time, constant feelings of inadequ inadequacy can increase the risk of developing anxiety and depression I know from talking to other musicians that the pressure you're under to keep working is quite high, he adds. And the last one is self-medication. Finally, Barnaby says a culture of self-medication and drug abuse in the music industry poses a unique mental health challenge to musicians. 
according to Record Union's report, among independent music makers that have experienced ne negative emotions in relation to their music creation, one out of two have self-medicated as a treatment for mental illness. There isn't enough research to establish that musicians struggle with addiction at a higher rate than the general population, but Barnaby, Barnaby sorry, acknowledges that the archetype of the hard partying rock star didn't develop out of thin air. The classic idea of musicians being more open to taking drugs it is a thing, and of course, it can create risk for your mental health, men mental illness. I think there's a misunderstanding that taking drugs makes you more creative. That's certainly not the case for everybody, and for some people it can actually make them less creative and it disrupts their mental health. So, yes, that's just what I wanted to present to you guys, just in general speaking about musicians and DJs in particular. Like, just talk about the expectations that we were expecting out of, and not just like we, but like people putting on festivals in the EDM industry, and the nightclubs and things like that. Like what we expect out of these artists and what they expect out of themselves. Like there's probably so much pressure associated with like booking every single gig and wanting to have that experience and feeling like, like you know how you feel like a festival is like a can't miss and you, you just like have FOMO and you don't want to miss out on this experience. Imagine how they feel playing them. Like they probably just want to keep taking these opportunities that come towards them, especially when they're associated with a really high paycheck. So that can all play into this. and. Avicii is a perfect example of somebody who has all the success in the entire world and accolades and is still unhappy and still broken and lost and empty inside and it's just a horrible, horrible travesty of like how that all ended. And same thing, we've seen Eric Murillo, Cookie Monster, and now Io. Um, and it's just like, what, you know, what are the similarities here? What are they all experiencing? What, where are the mental health issues kind of like stemming from and coming from? Um, and then one thing that they pointed out in this article was substance use and abuse and that's obviously a huge thing that is brought up every single time in the raving industry because it's heavily associated with drug use and especially artists who are around nightclubs or playing in Vegas or Miami or Ibiza where you're constantly being offered drinks um, and you're being celebrated every single time you come there and I'm sure drugs are always present as well. It takes an extremely strong, stable person to say no to those things time and time again and not get wrapped up in that world and fall into the pressures. And I know Eric Murillo talked in this documentary, documentary about his issues and he had major substance abuse issues that impacted his career. Um, and again, unfortunately, he took his life, I believe, this past year. So it, it's just, it's a lot. There's a lot working against them in these situations. So it does really take a strong person and a strong team and the people around you. And that's one thing we're going to talk about in the last portion, just talking about moving forward and other solutions. The other thing I wanted to bring up was the pressure to please section. So this one, I kind of like, this one hit the most for me or I felt like could resonate with a lot of people because I, again, can't even imagine how competitive it is, especially in this industry and like all the different charts that you can place on. And it's not like a pop album or a rap album where you put them out once a year or something like that. Like DJs are putting out singles all the time. They're not really waiting on this like calendar that other artists are doing in other genres. Like you're constantly trying to top yourself and put something out that's gonna be well received, not only by the fans, but by other producers or you know anything so that they're booked on different lineups and things like that there is so much pressure associated with continuously trying to top yourself and top your peers and wow your audience and you know like it's exhausting 100 percent. and adding social media on top of that which like now you're not only a dj but you're also a social media personality because your life is out there being judged your music is being judged you are being yourself and you're probably receiving so many different, as much love as you're receiving, you're probably receiving just as much hate, especially on social media. Um, and if you're already somebody who struggles with mental health, like add all of that together and like it's a perfect poisonous cocktail for somebody. Like it's really extremely difficult to detach yourself from certain things, especially like I'm a tiny little minuscule content creator and I can even get caught up in numbers and get upset if something doesn't perform well or if I thought a video was going to do really well and it didn't do well like I'm in a place where luckily like I I can brush things off but like it can fuck with your mental health numbers can really get to you social media can very much get to you we've seen this happen in young adults so 
take an artist who puts music out and then can all of a sudden be on the other side of online bullying or something like that or being bogged down by the numbers and performances and the fear of being dropped by a label or something like that like it is a very high stress job to be in and this brings me to my next section that i want to talk about which is online bullying i needed to bring this up in general because the edm community is obviously like an extremely positive place we all know this it's very welcoming um very open-minded people are non-judgmental however online it can sometimes be a completely different story especially on twitter which like i feel like trolls just live on twitter but there have been situations in the past that have been completely uncalled for and situations of online bullying that have been horrible and i personally want to bring up the getter situation which was came out when he put out his album visceral which was a really cool experimental album for him he wanted to try something new and go in a different direction i'll never forget this this was in 2019 i believe he canceled the rest of his tour he had his tour for the album and then canceled it because the online response was so fucking vile and hurtful and like non-stop all the time towards him that he canceled his tour because he phys he mentally could not handle it anymore and he wrote in a post on april 2019 i started the visceral project to move forward with not only my career but my mental state i thought this tour was an effort to make myself happy and prove to everybody that music is more than just raging on a weekend imagine working towards something putting in all your effort time and money into something that you feel could finally separate you from the rest and show that you do have purpose all to just get yelled at booed have shit thrown at you because it's not the cookie cutter bullshit that you're used to criticism is healthy my friends and i frequently critique each other's work and it helps the final product however the constant hate and disgusting attitudes i'm faced with are destroying me to all my actual fans who have supported me and helped me through this bullshit, I love you and I'm so fucking sorry I have to do this. I'm not happy anymore. I'm canceling the rest of my tour. I need to make myself happy. I can't do this shit, man. I'm like in tears reading that because I can like feel his pain and I was so angry when this happened. Like there were stories of people doing this shit to him at his own fucking show. First of all, I don't want to pop off right now, but who the fuck spends money to go see a tour, to go see an artist, you spent money on a ticket to be there and then you throw shit on them at stage or you turn your back on them at a rail. Like what the fuck is wrong with you? How were you raised? Like that's like a whole nother level of respect. And that comes into the fan section and what we can do as people to make it a better place for musicians to have a safer space. Again, critique is good. We're not gonna like everything we fucking hear. Hello, that's the reality of life. But you don't need to be a shithead and disrespect other people. If it's not for you, don't listen to it. Don't buy tickets to something. You do not need to go out of your way to write a nasty comment on someone's page. Like, just don't do it. Every thought that comes through your head does not warrant you writing it somewhere. You just don't need to put that out into the world. So think before you write something like that in the future. And I know the guys listening, you guys are all amazing. And I love you. And I know you're not like that kind of person. But this is the perfect example of people literally bullying someone and being so shitty and vile towards them on a daily basis continuously on social media that forced him to cancel his tour. Again, he poured his heart and soul into this album and this tour and it's like his livelihood and he literally was forced to cancel it like i can't fathom that was like one of the worst examples of that happening but sorry i just popped off but that just made me so angry because i could literally never imagine bullying someone into just because you don't like their music like move the fuck on go listen to something else it's literally not that hard i don't understand so anyway i need to ooh, i need to bring it back bring it back um, it's just been like an extremely difficult past week to witness the loss of like a life and an artist that I really respected and admired and loved and it just breaks my fucking heart and I think it, we need to, something needs to change moving forward. So I wanted to like touch on a couple things here at the end that can possibly be done for everyone involved in the EDM community, especially musicians. So again, we've announced, we've seen artists in the past announcing that they're taking breaks or they're pausing their tours or they're spending more time at home so like how can this be avoided in the future like how do you avoid having a grueling schedule like i think that comes down to the team and the tour manager and the gm and all of those things putting together their schedules like there definitely needs to be a healthier balance between real life and career
And obviously that's up to every single person and what their career goals are, but there needs to be a healthier schedule, I think. And people like, I think teams need to know when to step in and schedule breaks and things like that for, for artists. Um, I've also seen a couple people this past week, a few artists in the industry tweeting that there should either be therapists or professionals on staff with artists who specialize in mental health services to protect artists. So whether that's like the record labels themselves or that's a person on staff for every single artist, but like having access to therapy or mental health professionals so that they have people to talk to and to deal with these issues in a safe space. Um, again, I think it's a matter of keeping a safe, like a safe space around these artists. So when they're at nightclubs and things like that, you know, how do you avoid having certain substances around or making sure that there's somebody that's kind of like looking out for you, especially if you're more susceptible to having substance uh, abuse issues. And then I think it obviously comes down to each person and how you cope with your life. Like for me, meditation is really big. And I know in the documentary, a couple DJs mentioned that having a healthy diet, adding meditation, going to therapy, all of that helped them kind of like quiet the noise in their head. Um, and then lastly, I obviously mentioned this before, but knowing when to raise your hand and say that you need help, vocalizing the issues that you're going through and admitting when you, when you need help, there's no shame in that whatsoever. Every single person goes through it. Every single person needs somebody to talk to. So, you know, we're all human. We all struggle. Admitting it is allowing yourself to finally start working on a solution. So that's kind of like the first step that you need to take. And then as fans, I just wanted to mention, I know I've talked in past episodes, like ways to support them, especially this year, you know, buying their merch, sharing their music, supporting them online, watching their live streams. Of course, if they're playing shows, like going to their shows, buying tickets and things like that. But um, definitely check out the documentary, Why We DJ, just like make yourself more aware of the things that people are going through on a daily basis. Um, be kind to artists. Again, manners cost nothing. You would be surprised how many people actually see the things that you're writing to them online. Like I think a lot of times people just think, oh, I'm gonna write this comment and they're never gonna see it. Like that's absolutely not the case. People see it a lot more than you think that they do. So do not be so quick to write a nasty comment. Again, if you don't like something, if you don't like a song, move the fuck on. Do not write a nasty comment like, not for me, this is shit. Like all of those are, you do not understand how much that affects someone's mental health because you might be one person writing that, but they might get 50 messages like that a day. It's so unnecessary, like move on if you don't, if you don't like something. Um, be really kind to people online. It, again, it costs nothing. And if it's not your taste, just move on from a situation. So that's kind of like all I have to say really about there. Um, looking ahead to 2021 we obviously at this point don't know what's going to happen but i can only imagine that when shows and festivals return dj's tours like tours or schedules are going to be beyond packed like i i mean especially right after they're going to want to get on the road they're going to want to have a million things booked back to back they're going to need to make their money back so I just like look, you know, looking out for them. I hope that they can find a healthy balance and figure things out. And I know they'll be so excited to play shows again, but you know, I just wish that they keep their mental health in check as well. And they're able to find a healthy balance and something that works for them because this life is fucking exhausting and I don't know how they do it honestly, but I'm grateful for it and grateful for all the shows that I've gotten to see in the past. And kind of like the last few thoughts I wanted to leave with before I like get into EDM news and wrap up the episode. I think like, I was thinking about my keywords for next year and I think the keywords I would say to fans and artists both would be pace yourself because I think especially after this year like for me it's been a big year to save money and to figure out my priorities and what I value and what's important to me and even as a fan like I'm going to want to attend everything I'm going to want to go to every fucking show I'm going to want to go to every festival and I already knew in 2020 that I was overdoing it and that it does take a toll on your physical and mental health. It's financially difficult to attend all of these things. So like pacing yourself is going to be a really big key are going to be big key words next year and the years after that. So there, there needs to be like a healthy balance that's struck. Don't put yourself out financially. Don't put yourself out physically, like definitely take it easy, especially if you take substances or things like that. Like if you haven't done that kind of shit this whole year, and then you all of a sudden go to a million festivals next year, like really consider what is good for your health in the end. Check in on your friends and family. I cannot say that enough. 
people can put on such a facade on the outside that you have no idea what's going on at home and like Kendall mentioned you don't know who's struggling or who's dealing with issues on a daily basis so please 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 check in on people send a nice note to an artist that you love like send something nice to them and surprise them um surround yourself with good people because the people around you and like people on their team your influences are extremely important to you so surround yourself with good people who genuinely care about your well-being um again we are all in this together not to make it a fucking cheesy high school musical ass reference but like we are in this together this community is probably the most like tight-knit community out of any other genre in music and i know that there are support groups i know that there are people to rely on so the final message i wanted to leave you guys for those of you who did not know io his name stood for infinitely one and i wanted to read this post that he posted on his wordpress site in 2016 when he was announcing his new project as io he wrote garrett wrote i have a message to share with you and you have a message to send back there is art we must hear see feel together it is time to bring it back to when music meant something time to reacquaint yourself with the love and emotional breath of music and forget about the clicks politics and the stigma that our culture has accepted as normal time to break down the barriers between us knock down the separations it's time to come together and thus i present fox.io infinitely one let it remind you of the euphoria you felt when you first heard music let it remind you of the awesome potential in each of us let it remind you that no matter which group you've aligned yourself with we all play for the same team we are all one infinitely Ugh, breaks my fucking heart to be completely honest with you guys it breaks my heart i'm so fucking devastated about io i can't even begin to talk about it but we don't need to lose anybody else. We don't need to lose anybody else this year. We don't need to lose another artist, another person, friend, family member, anybody. So I don't know. I hope this episode was helpful. I just really think we need to talk about this more and have more conversations about it. I don't, we don't need to see another DJ facing burnout or mental health issues. It's been an extremely difficult year. So just be supportive, be there for people raise your hand if you need help and talk, talk to somebody. Do not be ashamed to talk to somebody if you need anything. So that's the last thing I wanted to leave you guys with there. I'm going to take a super quick break here, guys, and then I'm going to get into EDM news, my songs of the week, and then we will wrap this whole thing up. Alrighty, you guys. So the first thing I wanted to start out with, um, my EDM news, I do industry news and I do festival news. I really don't have much for festival news this week. Um, Dead Mouse is going to be playing a Park and Rave series for New Year's Eve, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, I think he's played a couple um, raves, but yeah, it's a concert series that's going to be in San Bernardino on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. So I'm not sure if the tickets are sold out already. I'm sure they are at some point, but there's that if you guys want to see it. It's presented by Mousetrap. And then in industry news, I've already talked about it a lot in this episode, but the biggest shock and travesty of all last week was the news about i was passing to say it sent like complete shock waves throughout the entire edm industry is like not even scratching the surface of it it was complete and utter devastation um very unexpected very tragic he i talked about if you guys want to check it out i put, put a video up remembering io and sharing some clips but he was the last show i saw before covid happened and like I said this in that video but like i cannot even tell you guys how grateful i am like it was literally one of the most amazing shows i've seen he played in this like sweaty club in brooklyn and it was just such a fucking vibe and it was daylight savings night so the clocks pushed forward and he played for like over four hours i enjoyed every minute of it and he had so much potential and i said this like he was starting a whole new generation of techno lovers like he was bringing this whole like acid rave vibe and his life was cut extremely short and there's just so much talent there so we are lucky that we get to still have his music and still listen to it it will hold such a different meaning now i like literally can't listen to half of the songs but for anyone who never got to experience a live set by him i am extremely sorry truly um it's like devastating all around for everybody but my heart is with his friends and family and his peers 
I'm sending all of you guys love and prayers. Um, and so that just was like extremely difficult and that's why I wanted to make this episode in the first place. So everything else kind of seems fucking pointless after this, but Grammy nominations are out. Um, I can read the ones for dance recordings, but the dance and electronic music category, sorry. Okay, this is the most exciting to me, but Diplo and Side Piece were nominated for their song On My Mind. I feel like Diplo is a Grammy favorite, but I was really, really excited for Side Piece, which is party favorite Nitty Gritties um, group together. So really, really excited for them. Disclosure featuring Amine and Slow Tie was nominated for My High. Flume was nominated for Song The Difference. Jada G for Both of Us. And K Tronada featuring Kali Uchis for 10%. I honestly don't know who those last people are, sorry. Um, best Dance Electronic Album was Arca Bauer, which was really exciting. Disclosure, K Tronada, and Madion. So congrats to all of them for being nominated. I think that was really huge. We also got an announcement from Subsidia Records that they are coming out with Night Volume 2 on December 1st. So that should be out already. Um, and this is like a lot of heavy artists, which is really cool. But yeah, Subsidia is Excision's new record label. They're coming out with all kinds of bass music, all different genres under that. And it's really cool because they have a lot of up and coming artists on there as well. So there's plenty of people to discover there, which is really exciting. And then I, I saw this tweet shared from Beats Inclusive, which I thought was really cool. Space, Club Space is doing something for BI POC students. They have a new program called the Space Scholarship Fund, which says the program will fund three $4,000 awards each year to BI POC students in South Florida looking to pursue a career in arts or hospitality. So I thought that was awesome that they're doing that. Um, Insomniac Events also shared that they're going to be hosting food drives at some of their driving concerts with the help of at Musically Fed. So definitely if you guys plan on attending any of their events, check and see if they're doing any food drives um, so that you can participate in that. I love that they're doing that. And then lastly, I saw this article on EDMmaniac.com that said rapid COVID-19 event testing service has officially launched. So I'll read this really quickly. Uh, it says, it looks like we're getting closer and closer to live events. According to MixMag, Swallow Events has announced it's partnering with the healthcare company Roche in order to bring a rapid COVID-19 testing service designed specifically for the events industry in the UK and the rest of the world. Founder and managing director of Swallow Events, Ali Thomas, openly stated that our rapid testing kits, a market leader used in conjunction with track and trace data collection and other COVID secure protocols, such as touch point and temperature checks, will help event organizations in all sectors from large scale events, concerts, stadia, and business conferences. The service will use MHRA and CE approved tests that will allow results to be determined in as little as 15 minutes. Ali Thomas believes that the government approved testing service will help save over 570,000 full-time jobs that are disappearing at a startling rate. The test will account for 96.5% sensitivity and 99.68% specificity according to MixMag. Thomas goes on to say that he has been working in close conjunction with local authorities and ultimately enabling organizers to open in a safe, responsible, and COVID secure environment. This may be the break that we've all been looking for and it seems as though returning to live events is on the horizon and the saying goes, so close yet so far. So I thought that was interesting and that's kind of like how I wanted to end the EDM news segment because again, one thing that I always say is like, so much of life is temporary. Like especially like certain pain you're going through, like whether it's heartbreak or something like that, like that's temporary pain. It will get better. You will find love again. You know what I mean? Like COVID, we don't know what's going to happen, but hopefully based on vaccinations or these systems, like events will come back. Festivals will come back. You know, the situation we're in right now is temporary and it hopefully will get better. And hope, you know, people far smarter than I will figure out ways to make that happen. So I just, it's kind of like one of these things that like you do not want to make a decision that is permanent that you cannot take back for something that is a temporary pain or a temporary feeling. So that's why I'm saying like talk to somebody, do what you need to do to get yourself to a better place. And I know how extremely dark and it can be for some people, especially during this season. But I just wanted to say like there is hope on the horizon. There is a light at the end of the tunnel and just like hold on to those things as much as you can. So that was exciting news to hear and that's the last i have for my edm news segment um really quickly i'll get into my songs of the week for those of you who don't know every single friday i put out a playlist called new music friday on spotify where i highlight the top edm releases every week and i pick all my favorite ones and the biggest ones that you guys should know about 
So definitely feel free to go follow that. Um, so all the songs I mentioned today are usually in that playlist and I also share links in the Facebook group so that you guys can stay up to date with these tracks. But the four that I have this week, um, the first one is from the artist Cat Dealers, who I know I'm gonna sound like an idiot, are a massive group. I believe they're from Brazil. I think they're brothers. They're either cousins or brothers. I think they might be brothers. But I saw them play at Insomniac's EDC Orlando live stream and I'm so fucking late to the game. Um, they were amazing. I loved their set. It was so good. And I really, really like their new single, Save Me Now. So it's a great little house, boppy beat. Um, great vibe, awesome drop. So definitely check out Save Me Now by Cat Dealers. I also really recommend checking out the Disco Godfather's new song, Syrup Dreams. They do a little bit of everything. This is more of a house track, um, kind of gives me like bass house vibes, but they're so much fun. They also do like a little bit of dubstep and bass and yeah, they were on the podcast this past year, which was awesome. So definitely go support them. Uh, I also was very excited about Charles D new single. So this came off of Prita Presents, which is Eric Prids's alias, my favorite alias. I love Prita. And this was on his label, so it's called You by Charles D. So if you guys are a fan of Prita or Eric Prids, I highly recommend checking this track out. It's beautiful. And then lastly, um, they were hyping this up for a while, but Ophelia Records, um, which is Seven Lions record label, just came out with, um, or just released Gareth Emery's new remix of the song Train to Nowhere. And it is so good. I'm pretty sure this is the first Gareth Emery release on Ophelia Records. So I love seeing the trans fam come together. That was really exciting. Um, big fan of a lot of the trans releases that came out this week, but that one in particular is very good. So if you're a Gareth Emery fan, I know you guys will really love that. So that brings us to the end of the episode, you guys. Thank you so much for listening to me rant for an hour and talk about this. I'm I'm happy with how this came out. I was very, very nervous going into this episode, like I said, because this is like not an easy topic to tackle. I'm not an expert in this department at all. But again, like this past week really shook me and rattled me and was ex I cannot even imagine how difficult for so many people. And I just think it's extremely important to have these conversations. So please take care of your mental health. Please look out for other people. Find your support systems, find your purpose. It's okay if you don't have it yet, like it will come to you. It will come to you and better days are coming. I know it can, can seem so fucked up in this world right now, but they are coming. And to any artists listening or DJs, like take care of yourselves. Definitely try and pace yourselves and have a healthy balance between your career and what you do. And I know it's extremely hard, but you know, be kind to others, you guys, especially online during this time. Do whatever you can, any way you can show support to artists who are really going through it this year and who don't have like their jobs right now. It's extremely, extremely hard. So whatever you guys can do to support this holiday season and just become aware, go check out that documentary, Why We DJ. Um, I will definitely leave a link down below so that you guys can check that out. But uh, I think it's just a really good look into the life of artists and what they go through. So, um, yeah, I'm excited that we were able to talk about this today and well, not excited. That's definitely not the right word. I don't know. I'm glad I was able to like bring this up and we can talk about it and have these real conversations. And I'm extremely grateful to have this platform to talk about these things with you. I do not take that lately. Very, very thankful for it. And I appreciate all of you being here. So, you know, if you guys enjoyed this, please share this with somebody today. Make this your Instagram stories. If you know anybody who's struggling with their mental health and just needs somebody to talk to, like share the resources that are linked down below. Um, but any support for the podcast, you know I appreciate it more than anything. You can connect with me on Instagram at Emma Capotis and at Rave Culture Cast. Um, our Facebook group is always open. If you guys need a community, we are here for you. We do family Zoom calls and you know, there are resources shared and there's always somebody to talk to in there and that's called the Rave Culture Cast community group. So please, you're more than welcome to come join that. Um, and again, if you're looking for the YouTube videos and you're a little confused starting today, they are gonna be uploaded to the Rave Culture Cast YouTube channel. So if you wanna watch the interviews and see bonus clips and things like that, definitely subscribe to Rave Culture Cast on YouTube. I think that's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for listening today. I really appreciate it. I wish you all well. I'm sending hugs to everybody. Hang in there. Take care of yourselves. And I will be back next Wednesday with a brand new episode. Love you guys. Bye.